25, this is Motormouth. I'm Andrea, just back from Costa Rica. These are the boys from London. And this lot are from... <laughs> Now, today promises to be sore bottom day on Motormouth. Why? Because ah, we're on skates and uh, there's going to be the odd ball of two. You are what? such a cheat. It's not fair. Right, we're going to show you how it should be done. Tony, show us. Oh, oh, for a go on. Go on. Right. It's only Yo, not too bad. Hey! Come on, Neil. Come on. What? Oh. He gets away with it every time. Yeah, not bad. Come on, Gabby. Right. Come on, you. Yeah! yeah. Oh, oh, Gabby! <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Actually, there is a very good reason for this, because later this morning we'll be looking at the latest roller skating development, and they're called roller skis. Yeah, and if Gabby doesn't go too far, come back, Gabby, all is forgiven. And if Tony and I manage to stay on our feet, the next two hours will look something like this. Lovely. Lovely. Sir. This is how it should be done. <laughs> ah, what do you think of this? <laughs> Thanks very much. Where are you lot from? Ah, Noisy lot. So we're going to be running our cartoon competition as usual. We'll be giving you a question after each of our three cartoons. Hold on to your answers. We'll tell you what to do at the end. The first cartoon is Speedy, just like me. I love his voice. I think he's got Brilliant. a fantastic voice. Right, here's the first of today's cartoon questions coming up right this second. What was the second word of the title of the cartoon? Simple as that. What was the second word of the title of the cartoon? Keep your answer to one side and we'll tell you what to do with them at the end of the program. Last week we had lots of correct entries and the answers were red, green, indigo and violet. And I'm really sorry if you've got a black and white television. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm. Right, the first winner is Joanna Lynch and she's from Wembley in Middlesex. And the second winner is Crispin Small from Leckhampton. Five packs on the way to you. Well done. Well done, yeah. Yep, well done everyone. Now, um, Andrea's back with us after her trip to Costa Costa Rica? Costa Rica. <laughs> Costa Rica. Not Costa Brava. Right, well, have a cup of coffee. How was it? Uh, I hope it's Costa Rican coffee. It is. <laughs> it was fantastic. It's a brilliant place. I had an absolutely wonderful time. Yeah. I'm going to show you the film later on. Good. All You're right. going to be watching. Yeah. How do you feel, though? Was it hard work, Clive? It was very hard work. It wasn't just one big holiday, you know. You it go. was hard work. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, guys, Andrea, while you've been away, we've had a couple of letters in. We've had this one from Joanne Merrick, Merrick from Shropshire. She says, Dear Motormouth, I like you three the best. I can remember when you never had that awful man on your show. Tell him <laughs> from me that I think he is evil to the children and I don't think I would like to meet them. Yeah. wonder who they're talking about. Oh, couldn't What's her name? <laughs> Joanne! I'll have her in the head crusher! <laughs> oh, don't worry, Joanne, he won't. We'll sort him out. He's too busy torturing our audience. <laughs> Again to it's torture. Yes, now behind me is this wonderful roller machine, which was slowly dragging three of our four victims and mangle them up. Yes, so only one of the four will survive to the end. Now, Ratchet's been testing the machine all week yes, on sir. hedgehogs. <laughs> No, Ratchet, you shouldn't use hedgehogs. Yes, All the vegetarians sir. will switch off. <laughs> if you want to test it, use children. <laughs> now, ah, shut up. The rules are very simple. I'll ask the questions. If you know the answers, buzz. If you're right, the other three will be slowly rolled into the machine and mangled up. If you're wrong, you will be rolled into the machine and made out of mincemeat. The aim of the game is to survive. Oh, nice one. They're getting the neck. 
Right, are you ready for the first question? Yes? Do you want to test the buzzer? Test the buzzer. You test your buzzer. Ah! Yes, the buzzers work. Right. Right, this is a normal question. If it is precipitating, what is happening? You don't know, do you? None of you know this one. Uh, it's, um, oh, what is it? It's um, raining or hailing or snowing. Oh, Ratchet knew it. Never mind. This is an upstairs question. That means I'll ask you a question if you think your partner can answer it. Buzz, and they will do it. All right. From what animal do we get? Bacon. Right. Ah, that's great. So we answer that one upstairs. Pig. A pig, you are correct. That means blue, green, and I get rolled in. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you're too nice, you lot. Right. What is a kookaburra? Ah. Oh, right. and that's grey again. Is bread like Paul Gorm? A bird. Yes, it is a bird. That means red, green, and blue get rolled in some more. Lovely kitty. Right, an upstairs question. What film was to follow up to Star Wars? Ah, green. Oh, that's green. That makes a change. Go on, then. Answer that one upstairs. Sorry. Go on, Melanie. Don't you don't know, do you? No, you don't know, but my grand knows that one. It's the Empire Strikes Back. Right. Here's a normal question again. Who is the Prime Minister's husband? Ah, oh, uh, we've got that one. That's great. Go on, then, Paul. Uh, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis what? You are correct! That means red, green and blue get on it. Yeah. 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 Right, here's the last question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Who wrote Romeo and Juliet? Right. Oh, that's great. So answer that one upstairs. Don't oh, no. You don't know. It was William Shakespeare. Oh, get rolled in a bit, Greg. It's about time you got mangled up. All right, here's another question again. What are the colours of the rainbow? This is a long answer. Go on. Go on, answer that one then, Paul. Red, yeah, yellow, yeah, pink. yeah. No, pink. What? When did pink come into um, it? There's no pink. Perfect. No, you didn't get them right, did you? Roll it in! Roll it in! Go on, that's it. Get it in! Get it in! Right, right. Here's an upstairs question. What was Mickey Mouse's dog called? Ah! Oh, that's great again. So answer that one upstairs. Uh, you are correct! That means red and ah! blue get rolled in with lost red! And we lost red! We've got a winner! Join me over here for the torture dungeon! Lovely! Right, let's get them in. Mr. Ah, hello! You just come back from Costa Brava, right here. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Oh, we like you as a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice, <laughs> is it? Right, let's get the partner in, shall we? Hello, Elliot. Come on this side here, mate. All right, how old do you think you know Paul? Really well? Yeah, Paul, you think you know him well enough to answer a very personal question about him? Yeah. A very personal question. Hey, Paul, turn around. I told you to turn around. Don't show your back. Your mum won't be able to see your lovely face. Right. You want to stick these headphones on him? Not that lovely, is it? Right. Stick these over his ears. Put the torture helmet on him. <laughs> switch it on. Can you work out how to switch it on, Andrew? I think so. That's right. That's very clever. It's written clay. Right. Are you all right in there? Can't hear me, can you? Right. Now, let's pick up the question. Right. Are you ready for this, Elliot? Are you ready? It's a difficult one. If your friend gets a large bar of chocolate, do they? Eat it all at once, or say something like that. Eat it all at once. You reckon eat it all at once? Right, take that off him. Take that off him. Take that off him. Right. <laughs> Paul, if you get a large bar of chocolate, do you eat it all at once, or say a bit till later? Uh, eat it all at once. Eat it all at once! Give them the prizes. What have they got in here? What have they got? Oh, they've got some albums. They've got some lovely stuff. Here, yeah, you can take them home with you. Have a good time. See you in the final. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's still not too late to cross Steve off your Christmas card list. Right then. Here we go. The man on the bike is Andy Circus, and he's from a new children's ITV drama that starts on Monday, which is called Streetwise. Andy, what's it all about? Well, basically, it's all about a um, courier dispatch company and their struggle to survive in a very cutthroat world. OK, well, we have got a clip from the first episode. This is where your couriers have a race against their arch rivals, the motorcycle couriers. Streetwise, this is the mot motorcycle couriers. Have a look at this clip. Five. First one to Victoria. Three. Two. One. Which way are you sending him? Does it matter? Yeah, it does, as a matter of fact. He's doing the worst bit now. Like once they get down towards Trafalgar Square, then the traffic's on Dave's side. 
The clone will go down Southampton Row and into the Strand. Yeah. What do you think? Should we send Dave through Covent Garden? Well, did he go through Covent Garden? Did he win? Well, you don't need to know the answer to that, do you? You have to watch the final now. <laughs> Good bit of plug in there. So where did you actually shoot it? Well, it was all shot all around London, all the different locations, Hoxton Square, West End, East End, all over the place, Stockland. So, so you really got stuck into the smoke there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did you have to stop the traffic for the filming or what? No, 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 it was all done. I mean, the whole point of it was to show how dangerous the traffic is and, and what real cycle couriers have to go through, really. So. Yeah, it certainly does that. I mean, you can see from that clip yeah. of the guys dodging in and out of the traffic there. Yeah. What about you on the bike? I mean, was it difficult being on a bike all day filming? Did it get tiring? Uh, yeah, it did, but I mean, we all sort of did a bit of training and stuff and, and worked out what it was like to be a cycle courier, and we all did a bit of research into, went to work for companies and so on. So you did a bit yourself? Yeah, yeah, I went and worked for a company called Mega Cycles, which yeah. is based in the East End, and um, just for a few days to see out what it was really like, you know. Brilliant. Well, listen, best of luck with the series. Thanks it looks really me. good. That's Streetwise. It's up 4.45 on Monday. Have a look at that. All the best with that, mate. It's, it's looking a really good series. Coming up before that, though, is Motormouth Part 2. Today we've got The London Boys and also coming up we've got a film review, a new film, it's called The Bear. That looks a good film to bear. bear. <laughs> That's it. Oh thanks. Look, it's horrible anyway. My brother's seen it. He'll give you the what's it. We've already got the what's it. You look all right to me. Mm. All right, what's it worth? <gasps> cheesy. Delightfully cheesy. Just melt in the mouth. <laughs> oh, oh. 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 Wow. <laughs> what's it to me? Watch out for the free Batman gear offer on special packs. Woke up with sore finger. Tried to get off game. Failed. How I hate football. But at least there's a break at half time. Yeah. Who needs those messy oranges? Luckily I took me Capri Sun. Made with natural fruit juice. And there's no horrible sticky mess. Didn't save the goal. Save me Capri Sun though. Rustling hamburgers. He says he was roped into it. Get into Love House and feel the emotion. Love House, where soul meets deep house in an erotic combination. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. 16 sensual hits to be held to on Love House. Love House, out now on album cassette and CD. She can't say I didn't tell her, but would she listen to me? Oh, no. She knew best. Gravy's gravy, she said. They won't notice the difference, she said. Well, they did, didn't they? Don't miss the boat. Insist on Bisto. Twisting down with graphic gel spray from Garnier. The hair holds up, no build-up. Beat with graphic mousse fixate. Volume control, no stickiness. Strong on style, kind on hair. New graphic from Garnier. You'll love Tracker in roasted nut or chocolate chip. Tracker makes straight for the taste. Tracker, now with new apple and black currant. t Fowl present a major advance in cookware technology. Ultra Base. It has a highly conductive base which distributes heat quickly and evenly. And a pan that heats evenly cooks evenly. 
new ultra base from Tifal, the ultimate in quality cookware. Welcome back to Most Mouth Whoop 2. Now, do we recognise all of these? Roller skates, obviously. Now, these are a very, very old pair indeed. Look at that. Just a metal frame you clip on the underneath of your trainer. Quite ancient. <laughs> and uh, Andrea's quite good on skates as well. So we'll be getting her involved with later on. Won't we, Andrea? Yes. Yes, we'll get her on some skates. Now, after those, the next development in roller skates was these, roller boots. Now, I'm sure you've all seen these. It's got a lot more ankle protection here. Well, in fact, it's got a whole boot on there. So, less injuries, of course, because your ankles are protected. And underneath, well, sort of skateboard design, really. You've got uh, proper trucks there and uh, high-performance wheels. So you can do a lot more with them, more tricks, more speed, and a lot safer as well. Now, there's another development in roller skates, and that is the roller ski. And there's one there. Very similar to a roller boot, except underneath, there's just one single line of wheels. It's just like an ice skate, but with wheels. And that's used by sort of ice hockey players and professional skiers to practice with. And to put them to the test this morning, five very good roller skaters. Come on in, everyone. There we are. There's some of them are wearing roller boots, others are wearing roller skis. We'll find out what they make of them in a couple of minutes. But also on skates this morning, the London boys and Andrea. Yes, we've managed to talk Andrea into doing a bit more skating. How's it going? All right? <laughs> Not bad. Right. Now, actually, really? this isn't the first time you've all skated together, is it? No, it's come not. On, no, come on, come on. No. <laughs> well, who's going to tell him? Come on, you, you. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. Uh, well, once upon a time, many years ago, we used to be in a roller skating group called the Roxy Rollers. Right. I'm afraid to say. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? It was good, though, wasn't it? Yeah, we had a good time, didn't we? What sort of things did you do? Dennis. Oh, we used to do a lot of uh, skating and we used to do shows around the country and right. uh, we actually performed in front of uh, Princess Margaret, believe it or not. Did we? I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> that was in right, the right, castle. Right, stop reminiscing. <laughs> now, uh, we'll get the magazines it. out. If we can send you off, just have a little, little go on the roller skis. Okay, right, 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 fine. See how she gets on. Come okay, well, on. Well. Now, Adam, oh. you've got them on as well. Join the circle, yeah? Yes. What do you think <laughs> about them? Oh, well, I mean, I'm pretty used to the other skates. I must say, these for me are not so good, you know, I mean... Roller skates are the best for me, not these ones. Right. Let's have a quick look. How are they getting on? Well, Dennis is showing off already. <laughs> Andrea, what do you think of the roller skis? Um, I'm afraid I don't like them very much. Why not? Because I've been spoiled. I've been wearing roller skates for too long, and they're just not very versatile. You can't do very much on them. Can't now, you see? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Dennis, you, you've got the boots on. You're doing pretty well. They're wonderful. Do you want to swap? No way. No, you're happy on the boots. I think I'll stick with these ones, yeah. All right then, and uh, Adam, if you'd like to go and join them, we'll yeah, I'd love to. How you get on with them? Now this morning, our five helpers have been going around on the skates. Nikki and Chai, if you'd like to come and join me. There we are, Nikki. You've got the, the skis on. What do you think of those? Well, they're, they're like a challenge, and um, they're good. They're good. You just got to get used to them, right? And try them out. All right. Thank you very much. Carry on skating. Here's Gabby with something a little less energetic. I need a few lessons in that, actually. Talk of less energetic. Now, last night, a new film called The Bear opened in London after taking Europe by storm. It's a story about two bears and their plight against hunters, and it's all seen through the bear's eyes. Just have a look at this. Now, it was over six years ago that Jean-Jacques Arnaud started work on the idea of the film. And after four years of training Bart, the 11-foot, 2,000-pound Kodiak bear, it's heavy, the film got underway. Now, apart from the two bears, 
there were only three human beings and less than 700 words because the director felt that he wanted the pictures to tell the story. As you can see, they're beautiful. During the filming, both bears kept a very strict diet of several chick chickens a day, lots of fresh salmon and as many marshmallows as possible. <laughs> When you see this film, don't worry, because during the hunting scenes, they did use models of both bears for anything they thought might harm them. And in fact, the film is endorsed by the Worldwide Fund for Nature. The making of this film was almost as exciting as the film itself. Now, they, in this scene, where Bart, the adult bear, had to attack one of the hunters while he was washing. And most of the time, the actors and the directors had to work within only a few feet of the bears. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful film. You're all going to go and see it. It's brilliant. If you want to see how that scene finally turns out, you'll have to go and see the film yourself. It starts on October the 13th and it's nationwide. So I hope you're all oh, going to go. I can't see bear anymore. Oh, what are you doing here? Get out of that day. Go on. Sandra. Get on with you. <laughs> Sneaking away, eh? Oi, welcome back to. It's Sandra. Yes. Now, this is one of my favourite machines because it's the Head Crusher. And only one of these four will survive to the end. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. I'll ask the questions if you know the answer, Buzz. If you're right, the other three lose out. If you're wrong, you lose out. The aim of the game is to survive. survive. Yes, they get in the nap. Right, are you ready for the first question? Yes, we are, Stephen. Right, let's get going. Who is Popeye's? Girlfriend. Ah! Oh, that's red, so answer that one. Olive. Olive, you are correct. That means blue, green, and grey go up a step. <laughs> There's a look of worry on their faces there. Now, here's an upstairs question. Who did Simple Simon meet going to the ah! fair? Blue. That is blue, so answer that upstairs. Simon. It is correct, yes. That means red, green, and grey go up one. You gotta be quick there on the end, grey. Right, here's an upstairs question. How many legs has a tripod got? <laughs> oh, and that's red, so answer that one. Three! It's correct! That means green, blue, and grey. Oh, we're going to lose a couple any second now. I do love this game. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being booed. Here's an upstairs question. What sport would you be playing if you were in a scrum? <laughs> upstairs? That's blue, so answer that upstairs. <laughs> you don't know, do you? It's rugby! <laughs> we Get this one right, get, get this one right, Red. Right. What do you call a collection of geese? You don't know, do you? You don't know. None of you know that one? There's a, it's a gaggle. It's a gaggle of geese. Right. Upstairs question, how many squares are there on a chessboard? Ah! Whoa, Blue, you've got to commit to suicide here. Answer that one. Don't you don't know, do you? Ah, even my granny could have answered that one. Yeah! She's dead. Just a couple of more left to go. Normal question again downstairs. Spell Egypt. Ah! Oh, red. Go on then. E Y G. Oh no, you know it's E G, don't you? That means red goes up one. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Right, that's next question. Where does the prime minister live when she's in London? Ah! Right, that's red again. You better get this one right. Ten. Number ten, what? Oh yes. That means we lose green. Chamber! Right! Who's gonna bring on the helmet? It's them London boys! Good day to you boys! They've all come down the M25, they've all come down in their jam jars for a little, you know, look at the old Mark Mouse studio. How's it going boys? All right? Not, not bad. Lovely not bad at dances, all. boys, lovely. Do you like EastEnders? Of course you do. Of course you do! <laughs> Got a green <laughs> grace to in there, the old cock of Right, how you doing, Sergeant? You all right? Yeah. How well do you know your mate then? You think you know her really well? Yeah. What, really, really well? Yeah. Right, well, let's get her in and see if we can ask this question. Hello, Kirsty. Come here. Come here. Come stand by my side. Right. Do you want to stick the uh, helmet on her, lads? You've got to stick the uh, headphones right. on her first. 
Where are they? Stack it away there on the floor. Stick right. them on there. Stick the thing over her head. You ready? Let's go. Right. Oh, it shit on. She can't hear nothing now. She can because I just pulled the plug out. <laughs> I'll have to talk very quietly. Right. Are you ready, Sandra? What should your friend prefer at their birthday? A mountain bike, a video camera, or a computer? A mountain bike. A mountain bike. A mountain bike. Take that helmet off. Take that helmet off her legs. Good lads, good lads, good Eastern boys. Right. What, what would you prefer for your birthday? Would you prefer a computer, a video camera, or a mountain bike? Mountain bike. A mountain bike! They're both right! Give us a prize! Yeah! Now, if you're a bit of a Jace Donovan fan, you uh, no doubt will have heard Jason talking about his surfing exploits in various magazines or TV interviews and so on. Well, for one of the first times ever on TV... Did you get to see your legs? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Wow. Oh. Curry Beach and the Pacific Surf beckons. Lovely, lovely surf. Well, I suppose I would have started on about 13, but that was on a little lilo and. Uh, I mean, it's still very hard, it just depends on the waves. And obviously, out here, it's a little different than at home where they're more smoother. It depends on your, you know, it depends on your day. I have good days and I have bad days. might you get uh, get to go to the beach then? Um, I try and do it as much as I can because I like, I mean I like swimming, I like sort of keeping fit, you know, I like just basically being in the water I suppose. Actually, I was filling out a questionnaire one day and it said if you ever wanted to be anything or if, if there was something special in your life, what is it? And I'd say the water. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it's sort of, I mean it's a, it's, a, it's a place where you can be yourself, you know, and, and just sort of you're not disturbed and, and I enjoy I enjoy surfing and there's a lot of satisfaction. I mean, there's a lot of adrenaline pumps through you and you get down there on that wave and just sort of get yeah. through and if it comes out well, I mean that's 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 assuming you don't come out the other end with, you know, a, a blue head, you know, you just ground yourself or something. I sort of really like that living on the edge type of feeling, you know. Like, oh, can I do it or can I not? Does this mean then, if you weren't one of the world's greatest actors and singers, you'd take up a life of surfing? Um, no, I definitely wouldn't. <laughs> I don't want to end up with skin cancer, I don't think. But um, I, no, I just enjoy it as a hobby, you know. I, don't, I wouldn't want to take it seriously because obviously I'm, I mean, I, I'm not committed enough to it, and I don't spend enough time on the beach to sort of. And I'm 21, and that puts me out of the race immediately, you know. That's too old in the surfing world. <laughs> Sort of training or exercise. I mean, if, if someone wants to take it up, what sort of exercises would you recommend? Um, you have to, you have to work on up here, your shoulders, I suppose, and your chest, because that's where most of it comes from. It doesn't come from really um, kicking as such. Um, yeah, a lot of paddling, a lot of swimming. I think is probably the best exercise. How do you define what good surf is then? What, what does good surf look like? Um, it's um, it's what usually on an offshore wind. This is what you call an onshore wind, when the wind's blowing onto the beach. When the wind's blowing off the beach, you'll get a, a thing where it lifts the wave up. When it's blowing onto the beach, it washes it over and just makes it all messy. And usually um, you've got to have a, a storm or, a, or um, something to 
create turbulence within the water two or three days beforehand and that creates swell which then creates and if you've got the wind that creates a perfect wave to know is have you tackled any hawaiian style 25 foot waves no way no way i've got a uh, i've got a life to live yet <laughs> well i think we got a quick a quick peek of his legs there but for those of you that missed her there's one he did earlier <laughs> right now i don't know about you but whenever i go to a concert or watch a pop video i'm amazed at the dance routines now the london boys of course are experts at dance they're also called the rubberiest men in pop. Where did that come from? Well, I think that's because we actually dance a lot. We do lots of gymnastic tricks, and I think that's probably why. What do you actually do to keep fit? Because you're actually in great shape. Yeah, well, we do a lot of uh, workouts. Like, at the moment, we're travelling around a lot. We do most of our workouts in the hotel room, press-ups, sit-ups, things like that. Now, I have to say, I'm not as good on the skates as you guys. I mean, I was pathetic earlier on. I fancy uh, having a go at being a rubbery man myself. <laughs> Can, can you give us a few tips or something? Yeah, I mean, can you show me yeah, part sorry, of your routine? Shall I hand that to you? Tell us. Try this. this. Okay. Whoa! Yeah. Do you think I should have a go? Yeah. All right, then. What's the first move? What's, what's the first thing I do? Right. right. Go into a double spin. Can I just give that to you, then? You can... Yeah, okay. Go into a double spin. All right. Double spin. So, uh, I do a bit of that at the start. And then do... That's it. All right, as you stop, double. two kicks to the side. Okay. So, double spin. Two, Kick. <laughs> two kicks it. to the side. <laughs> They've encouraged That's right. Get down what? on your back. I'd better down on my back. Yeah. And just flick up onto your feet. Yeah. Shall go for it? Yeah! yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you reckon? Yeah. I thought that was all right. I think I'll stick to the roller skates. It was better at that. Now, listen, guys, I'm going to leave it to the experts. Harlem Desire, you're going to perform that for us. Right, we will, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what this lot are laughing about. I'll let you get ready there, because you're going to come and perform it too. Come on, you lot. Give it a bit of stick. Thanks, fellas. Off you go. In, lads. Yeah. <laughs>
yogurts today. I think they invented exercise. For me, it will perk of the job. At least, that's what Baker called it. There were others too, mind. Today, there's a new homemade loaf from Hobie's, made with all the goodness of the grain. Good old Hovis. Pliny Fisher, the facts of love. Fisher, their brand new single, The Facts of Love, out now. This is Ambrose the Cat, a wild, vicious creature, a terrifyingly uncontrollable animal. There's only one way to tame him, Ambrosia Cream Rice. It's deliciously creamy and comes from Devon, and when Ambrose tastes it, he forgets the call of the wild. Ambrosia Cream Rice turns this frenzied mass of claw and sinew into a sweet little pussycat. Ambrosia creamed rice. Devon knows how they make it so creamy. More sand over there, Jim. Left a bit. Now, Jim. Give us a tow! Come on, back to work. Leave it out. We've only had five minutes. Tonka Mites for the real world of construction. As we all know, William the Conqueror became king in 1066. He died in 1087. I love my honey. You'll go monster mad for the honey. When you meet the Thor Park Rangers, it's a fortnight fun in one. A PM25 at Junction 11 or 13. Welcome back. Now, have you ever seen a hologram? I remember the first time I saw a hologram, I was amazed and yet completely baffled. Well, if you haven't seen a hologram, this is what they look like. Take a look at that. It's a sort of 3D photograph made with a laser. Incredible. There's another one here. Look at that one. You just pick up its 3D-ness there. And here's another one here. And I can assure you that all these images are made on flat sheets of glass. Incredible, isn't it? That one looks a bit like our producer, actually. Now, I'd like to introduce you to the man that made these. This is Martin Richardson. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Neil. Now, Martin's a holographic artist. Martin, I've seen them, but I still don't believe them. I'm, I'm totally baffled, and I don't understand. Well, as, as Einstein once said, you don't have to understand. You just get used to it. Oh, well, I'll leave it at that, then. <laughs> so what is a hologram? Well, Neil, this is a hologram. Yeah. This is a reflection hologram, as were the, the others we looked at. And over there, we've got some rainbow holograms, which I'd like to show you. OK, shall we take a look at them? Now, is that all they are? 3D pictures made out of lasers? Um, yes. Um, What's there's... the difference between the ones you've shown us, then, and these ones that we're going to say here? Well, there's two different types, yeah. basically. The ones we've been looking at are reflection holograms, yes. because the, the light pours from the surface onto the, the film. Okay. These, these are rainbow holograms, transmissions where the light comes through the back. Okay, so this one we're seeing now is a rainbow hologram. This yeah. is a rainbow hologram. Okay, the thing that amazes me about holograms is that it doesn't matter what angle you look at them from, you can see the picture from a different angle. Well, that, that's because if you, you can compare a hologram with a mirror. Mm. If you think of a, a hologram as being millions of tiny silver crystals, all focusing light in a certain direction to produce the, the kind of illusion of space and, and depth. Wow, it looks like a, a moment in time frozen, doesn't it? Well, in fact, it is. It's a fraction of a second caught by a pulse laser. Wow. Now, it all sounds very complicated to me. It sounds very expensive to me. Is it expensive to make a hologram? Um, it's not expensive and it's not complicated. And what I'd like to do today is to attempt to try and make a hologram in the studio. Okay, so, so what do you need then to do that? 
This is it. Um, basically, we've got a, a very inexpensive laser. Yeah. Most schools have got one. So Aren't they very dangerous, though, lasers? Perfectly safe. If, if I turn the laser on here... Yeah. Um, you see, it's on my hand. Yeah. I, I can't feel any heat. There's absolutely no danger whatsoever. You're Don't a worry. brave man. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me doing that. What else do you need? Okay, the other things you need yeah. are an inner tube tire, yes. um, a paving slab, yeah. a bowl with sand in it, and the photosensitive plate, which is going to be our hologram. Now, notice you've got that covered up at the moment because of the lights in the studio. That's right. That's uh, right. Okay. It's... Also, you need a subject, and you have one here for us. And, of course, the subject, and today we're going to try the Motormouth logo. Okay. So, for the first time on live TV, we're actually going to attempt to create a Motormouth hologram. Is that right? That's right. So, what conditions do you need, Martin? Uh, there's two basic conditions which I'm going to have to ask for. The first is that we dim the lights in the studio. Yeah. And the second is absolute silence from the audience whilst we're making the exposure. OK, well, this is a big one. This is a first for live TV, a motor mouth hologram coming up with a bit of luck. Now, can we have total silence in the studio, please? Not a pin dropping. And if possible, can we have the lights dimmed? Very tense moment, this. I'm really nervous about this. Right. That's it. OK, so okay. what are we actually going to do now? Then? Right. Um, now, the first thing I'm doing is to place the, the subject in the bowl of sand, okay. like that, and I'm very carefully going to lift the hood off our plate. Okay. And when you're ready, Neil, if you turn the laser on for me. Okay, so you need three, two, one. Okay, that's fine. I right, turn it off. Off. So what now? Thank you very much. I'm now going off to develop the plate. Okay, so you're going off to develop the plate. We'll come back to see how it goes. Good luck. Thank you. So, we can't make a noise. Yeah. We can't have the lights on. But what was that noise? What noise? <laughs> that noise. Tony. What? No, it's just a ghost. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Janine, what is it? The monthly financial report. Once again, gentlemen, we're in the red. We're losing money on overhead, payment maintenance, damage to property, utilities, food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're eating us out of house and home and into the poor house. Yeah, you. All you do is eat and take. And what do you give in return, huh? I ask you. Yikes. There's your answer, Peter. He gives us love. To you, he gives love. To me, he gives ectoplasmic noogies and a great case for justifiable slimer side. Dr. Bankman, just give Slimer a chance and he'll earn his keep. We'll find things for him to do. You know, you're right, Janine. You're absolutely right. We can find little dewy things for him, right, Slimer? We'll start right now. Can you make yourself real small? Real Good. Now we put you in an envelope and we mail you to this guy I knew from college. He just loves jokes. 
Peter. No, Slimer. No, stay. Boy, Ray, we finally find something for Slimer to do to help us, and you won't let him. Some friend you are. But Slimer, I... Peter, we... Janine, which god did I offend? I wouldn't know, Dr. Stan. I just answer the phone. Just a little more. A little farther. Whoops! Come on, just a bit more. Well, well, what do you know? It's the mouse. Uh, hi, guys. What do you got there, mouse? Oh, I just... comics, some magazines, you know. Magazines, huh? What do you got? I've got Fantastic Monsters of Film World, Sci-Fi Times, the Frankenstein Papers. Oh, Frankenstein, huh? Big stuff. Hey, here's your Frankenstein. Boo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. Knocking him down ain't even a challenge. Come on, let's get out of here. Blast those guys. Someday I swear I'll... Oh, nuts. Who am I trying to kid? They're too big and there's too many of them. There's always too many. Oh, well. At least they're gone. Guess it can't get any worse. Nice, doggy. Nice. Nice, doggy. Thanks a lot, I, uh... Say, you're a ghost, aren't you? Well, you don't have to worry about me being scared. I've read about ghosts and monsters as long as I can remember. You're okay in my book, and you're sure a heck of a lot better than the guys who just left. Man, I'd love to see you do this to them. Boy, I'd pay to see that. Heck, I'd pay just to make sure they stop picking on me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> What? You're, you're saying you'll do it? You'll be my bodyguard? Well, my body ghost? Mister, you've got yourself a deal. My name's Mike, and I'm real glad to meet you. Clear. Come on. This is my room. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Boy, this is gonna be great. Pow! Yeah. Umph! Bash! Yeah. There's six of them. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Come on out of there. You can't do this to me. I'm paying good money for this, remember? What are you nervous about? You're a ghost. They'll be scared of you. All you have to do is look scary. You can look scary, can't you? That's it, huh? Oh, boy. I know. Hang on a sec. I know it's got to be here somewhere. <laughs> By the way, be careful of the stacks. The magazines aren't balanced very well. Ah, here it is. Okay, when I say look scary, I mean can you look like this? This is going to take a while. Where is 
Easy. I don't know, Dr. Stan. You had him last. Slimer! Dr. Venkman, have you seen Slimer? No. Wonderful, isn't it? Hey, what do you see, Rick? What do you want to do? I don't know. Give me a sec. I'll think of something. And there goes something now. Come on. How about we have some laughs, huh? What's the idea of running like that? I don't like to run. You think you're fast or something? Hey, I'm talking to you. What are you, playing deaf? I'm warning you, don't go getting smart with me. That shouldn't be too hard, Rick. I've seen Rock smarter than you. What? Okay, jerk, that's it. What's that? Must be... must be some kind of dog. Hey, what the... Good work. I knew you could do it. And don't come back, you creeps. Whatever that thing is, if it works for Mike, I ain't going nowhere near him. What are you, nuts? He called me a creep. He called all of us creeps. You're gonna stand for that? I don't know, man. Well, I'm not, and you're not either. Cause believe me, you better be more scared of me than you are of that thing, whatever it is. Cause when I'm done with Mike the Mouse and his pet, you can bet he's gonna be real scared of me. Yeah, real scared. <laughs> Old Slime is having a rough time no. today, isn't he? Now, I hope you're watching that carefully, because here comes the second cartoon question. What we want to know is, what did the Ghostbusters put Slimer in? What did the Ghostbusters put Slimer in? Hold on to that answer. There'll be more questions coming up later. Tony, do you like Blamange? Blamange? Yeah, I love it. Well, there's plenty of it over there. Right. It's torturous. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's time for... It's... In this game, the uh, victims get their just desserts because they're going to be covered in blemons. <laughs> one of these four will survive to the end. Are they all right? They're ready. Now, the rules are the same as before. Uh, I think we'll just get going. And the aim of the game is to survive. survive. They learn quick, these lot from Southampton. Right, are you ready for the first question? Yes, we are, Steve. Right, let's get going. Which is heavier, milk or cream? Ah! Right. Oh, that's great. What is it? Milk. You are correct. Yes, that means red, blue, and green get stuck in it. Filled up with lovely squiggly blemond. Oh, I love it. Now here's an upstairs question. What colour is called Schwartz in Germany and Noir? In front. Green. Oh, that's green. Might have dropped you in this one. Black. Ah! She's correct! Ah! Ah! That was a clever! That's red, blue, and grey. Oh! Filling up more and more and blue ones. They'll be swimming in it soon. Yeah. Shut up over there. Now, what is the name of Mike's dog in Neighbours? Ah! Oh, uh, that's green. Bouncer. You are correct! That's red, blue, green, and it's gonna be the last one. Next question. What birds are kept at the Tower of London? Ah! 
green. That's green, so answer that one. Blackbirds. What? Blackbirds? <laughs> they may be black, but they're known as ravens. Not raisins, ravens. <laughs> that green. She's let you down. Get rid of that one. Now, here's another question. What animal would you find at an equestrian event? Come on, come on, equestrian, equestrian. Come on, come on. Nobody knows, they don't know. It's horses. Right, and that's their question. What colour is woad that ancient Britons used to paint themselves with? It's blue. Come on, I've got to get rid of someone. I've said this question. Now, I've this question. What is Sooty's girlfriend called? Ah, no, hello. That's red. Tell me what it is, Dexter. Ah, oh, don't know. Yeah, don't know, do you? <laughs> it's Sue. Oh, what a shame. Right, what is her? What's it? Red is gone. Yes. I've said this question. What is the what? Who was policeman in Noddy? Who was the policeman in Noddy? Come on, come on. Ah, yes, green to answer that one. It's what? Biggest. No, it's Plod. Oh, ha, that's this question. In the comic, who is Walter the Softy Frightened of? Green. That's green. Dennis the Menace. Yes, you are correct. That means blue and grey. I think we lose blue, but we still got grey. Right. We must get this one. It's not this question. What bird does the USA have as their emblem? Come on. Come on. Green. That's green what? Eagle. You are correct. That means... We've got grey. I think we've lost blue. We've got a winner. Let's go. Shall we get in front of the torture chamber? Ah, ah, what are you doing here? Are you helping me out? We need some help. I need some help. I need some help. I need to see a doctor. <laughs> but don't ask me. Right, come on in. Bring her in. Let's bring the winners of this game in. You know they're going through to the finals at the end of the game. Come here, Kerry. How you doing? All right? Yeah. How well do you think you know your mate? Yeah. Really well? Yeah. You think you know her really well? Are we going to bring her in? And we'll find out if that's for true. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in, Melanie. Oh, look at this. Shower. Oh. Lovely. Bloom on. Oh. Right. Stick the, stick the thing on her. Oh, You've got to stick that on. You've got to stick the headphones on now. Stick the headphones on now. Right, let's ah. stick this oh. one. Let's switch it on. You can't hear me? How are you doing? All right? Right, I'm going to ask you a question. I hope you get this right. If you were shopping and your friend saw someone shoplifting, would they ignore it? Tell the person who saw them or tell one of the shop assistants. Tell one of the shop assistants. You tell them what do you think? You think they'll tell the shop assistant? Right. right. She's listening to Roger Whittaker. She's listening to Roger Whittaker. Lovely, lovely for her. Very nice. Of course, the one that she hasn't fallen asleep. Right. Right, you ready, Melanie? Ah. If you saw her, if you were shopping, and your friend saw someone shoplifting, that's you. If you saw somebody shoplifting, would you tell one of the shop assistants, tell the person who saw them, or ignore it? Ignore it. You'd ignore it! They lost! They don't get the games! They take the prizes away! The oh, no, take them away! Take them away! Oh, They're through to the yeah. final! We'll see them in a bit guys. in Hood Torture! <laughs> Not to worry, plenty of torture still to come. Ghostbusters Part 2. And also, did we manage to make a hologram? Find out, come in off. And also, a little bit of drama from Eurasia. Hello, mums and dads. Look who's here. His new videos will teach your kids. Reading. Playing safe. Sums and simple science. Now, what's that taught you? Yes, you'd be ever so clever to go along to Woolworths. You're going near there, mate. Hot to be carted off to a life of endless marching up and down. Yeah. The last thing we want you to do is join the army. Uh, great, I'll uh, ring you, sir. Uh, Sergeant. First, we want you to find out what it's really like. Done in, then. There's no obligation. Silly not to. All you have to do is come through the door. Some dogs really are special. And dogs this special deserve Caesar because Caesar is specially prepared with 100% meat in delicious jelly. And he'll love you for it. Caesar, specially prepared for special dogs. The crocodile 
Thomas Boat has beaten the sun. My dozy crew haven't even begun. But I know how to set them up. I know that you ready to go, 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 go. Kellogg's Cocoa Pop has magic. Even turns the milk chocolatey. So we'd rather have a bowl of Cocoa Pop. One out of two out of three. Now Deep Heat 4 is here with Starlight. With the Beatmasters and Technotronic. 32 of the hottest club hits. De La Soul, Korea and Inner City. Deep Heat 4, the hottest album around. From Telstar. Welcome back. Well, earlier this morning, holographic artist Martin Richardson here attempted to make live in the studio for the first time ever a motor mouth hologram. And here is the result. What's it going to look like? Be careful with it there. There it is. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Well done, Martin. Thank you. Now, this is such a unique item. What we're going to do is give it away in a competition. So we need a, a hologram question. Right, and the question is, yeah. which country was holography invented? Which country was holography invented? If you think you know, get it onto a postcard quickly and get it into Motormouth. What we'll do is we'll get Martin to sign the hologram and we'll get all the pop stars and stuff in the studio today to sign it. Get your entries in very quick to the usual address, which is holograms competition. Oh, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME 14, Five double L. Thank you very much indeed, Martin. Thank you. Man. I know you've got an exhibition coming up soon. I'll be there. Coming up is Ghostbusters Part Two. Will Slimer save Mike? Find out. And watch out for the cartoon competition question. Oh. Yeah, I don't like it. Slimer's been gone too long. I agree. This isn't like him. He was supposed to be here so I could run some electrothermal tests on him. Right, Egon. I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to miss out on that. But he's never disappeared for this long. I say we go after him. Nice theory, Ray. But where are we going to start looking? New York's a big town, you know. Hey, guys! Look what just came in the mail! An envelope full of money. Money, huh? Who'd be sending us an envelope full of money? Just offhand. I'd say Slimer was a pretty good possibility, wouldn't you? Oh, yuck! That's Slimer's ectoplasm, all right. But there's no return address. No problem. See? There's the zip code of the post office that picked it up. We'll start there. Come on! You know, you have to wonder why Slimer would send us money. You'd think somebody here told him he has to earn his keep or something. Okay, fine. So I'm the goat. I'm the pits. I'm slime. Dust beneath thy feet. Satisfied now? I hate it when they do that. I don't know, Rick. I don't think this is such a great idea. Don't be a wimp. Just give me a hand with this, will ya? All right, come on. Yeah, this is the place. My dad used to tell me stories about how they closed down this part of the subway years ago. Said there were all kinds of creepy things living down here. Maybe just what we need to take care of that jerk Mike. Yeah, well, what makes you think any of them will come work for us? Hey, don't worry. They'll like me because I'm tough. You'll see. Okay, uh, listen up. My name's Rick, and you're gonna come work for me. Dinner! Oh! 
They're just trying to scare us. Well, they're doing a good job. How do you expect these things to come back with us if they think we're a bunch of wimps? You say, come back with you? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Come back with us. Come back to outside. Up above world. Is trap. You trick us. No. Honest, no trick. We want you to come with us. Work with us. It'll be great. You'll see. Then you must invite us. Say it. Speak words. Is that all? Uh, okay, sure. We're inviting you to come up to the up above world. Okay? Well, this is the right area, but still no sign of Slimer. Gee, Ray, then I guess that means we'll have to go home. Peter, we've only been looking ten minutes. Really? How time flies when you're not with Slimer. I'm registering a broad-based increase in psychokinetic energy in this area. Could be related to Slimer's disappearance. Can you get a fix on it? Afraid not. It's a general jump. Too diffuse to focus in on. Give me a few minutes to recalibrate, and we'll see what happens. You heard the man. Once more around the park, James. You know, Peter, a little of you goes a long way. Just trying to help. Oh, what do you want? Listen, we figured anybody who can get a ghost to work for him is okay in our book. You want to hang out with us? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's true, I don't have a lot of friends, but... But then, come on. It'll be great. He could be telling the truth, but maybe not. You circle around back. If I need you, you know what to do. Hello? Hey, come on. Where is everybody? <laughs> funny. Real funny. Look, don't make me or my buddy get rough. Remember what happened last time. Oh, we remember what happened last time, all right. That's why we got us some buddies of our own. Don't be bashful, mouse. Say hello. Nothing to say? Okay, fine. Buddies, teach the mouse here what it means to mess with us. Well, come on. Snap to it. You're working for me now. No, we don't work for you. You have served us. We used you to come to Above World. Wait a minute. You can't do this to me. You... You... Ah! <laughs> May I make a suggestion? Yeah. <laughs> Run! Yeah. that thing adjusted yet, Egon? Yes. We're getting close to the source of the disturbance. Closer. Closer. <laughs> nice going, Egon. Couldn't have found him without you. I think he's trying to say something. Maybe he wants to check the oil. What is it, Slimer? What's wrong? <laughs> Trouble, guys. Sounds like we've got barrel whites. What's a barrel white? Barrel whites, Peter, are supernatural creatures rather like trolls. They live underground in nests. They can't come out unless someone invites them. Right. Just like vampires, they can't come into your home unless you ask them in. And someone's just set a bunch of barrel whites loose in New York. You can understand that? Hey, you grow up watching Lassie movies, you learn, okay? Slimer, wait, where are you going? Never mind him, Ray. I think we're going to have more than enough to keep us busy inside. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let them have it. Get back, man. Get back. Hey. Man, am I glad to see you. Get him. What can he do against him? Look at him. He's scareder than we are. Chicken. Never doing this ever again. Truce? You got it. Guess I'm just a force for good in our times. Yeah, yeah Peter. Peter. But then he came back and fought off those things until you found us. Not bad for a spud, eh, Peter? Especially after all he's been through to prove himself to us. And you. Yeah, the little guy's worth his weight in gold. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Brass, maybe, or tin, maybe paper. Or for that matter... You wouldn't dare. Oh, yeah? Slimer, I'm warning you! Hey! Watch it! Look! You! I take it back, all right? I take it back! I'd say that makes for a perfect day, wouldn't you? <laughs> Before I give you the final question in this week's casting competition, I've got time to remind you that we've got Vince and Angie of Eurasia coming up later on with two singles, and also we've got Angie talking about Costa Rica. Now, here's the last question. Where were the Ghostbusters going to start looking for Slimer? Where were the Ghostbusters going to start looking for Slimer? Write all three answers, we need all three, down on a postcard, please. Send it to the Motormouth address, and we'll pick out two winners next week who will both receive Motormouth prize bags. So we need all three answers on a postcard, please, and send it to Cartoon Competition, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14, 5LL. Now, still on the subject of competitions, you might remember Kylie Minogue was with, Kylie Minogue was with us a couple of weeks ago. We asked you to design a dream house for Kylie. Here are some of the winners, and everyone's going to receive a pair of tickets to go and see Kylie in October. Now, let's just start at the bottom. Lisa's in Newcastle. There's a picture of Kylie. Lisa's gone to amazing detail. Look at that plan there. And just underneath, that's what it would look like outside. Moving on to Melanie. She's in London. And Melanie's done the whole house in the shape of a kangaroo. Very original. Thanks, Melanie. Judith's in Port Talbot, and I like this one because uh, not only has she actually put windows in there, sort of uh, sticky tape, I think. As you open it up, you can see Kylie inside. There she is on the steps. Zoe's in Plymouth at the top. She's done a very colourful one. Thanks, Zoe. Two tickets on their way to you. And Lucy in Swansea has designed an underground house for Kylie. That's the plan, and that's what it looks like outside. Stephanie's done a sort of tranquil country cottage for Kylie. There it is. She's in Edinburgh. Andreas in Liverpool has done a chocolate sandwich house. Sounds tasty. And Lucy in Bristol has done a sort of Australian hat type design with boomerang shaped windows. And the big one in the middle is from Andrew in Liverpool and he's done Kylie's house in the shape of a K. Now there's only nine winners there because the tenth one is over here. And uh, this comes from Sophie Dudgeon. She's in Fulham and she hasn't actually done a design but built a model. Now I don't know if you can see in there. Isn't that amazing? Oh, There's actually there. a photo of Jason on the bedroom wall. Yeah. Isn't that great? Superb. So well done, everyone. Your ticket's on the way and have a good time.
Brilliant. Welcome. Now, did you spot the Motormouth coach going past your house? Well, it was on its way up to Liverpool last week and on its way down to Southampton this week. Did you spot it? Well, loads of you did, actually. Uh, and we've drawn two out of the hat here, the first two correct ones. Two, 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 two here. Two Lung Yin Yun, Miss J. Rowan from Cantrell Farm, and Ian Byrne from Everton. Ever oh, Everton. Everton. <laughs> oh. And the answer was, of course, the guest celeb. Martika. Well, Martika, sort, sort of. of yeah. Watch out for the Motormouth coach. It's going up to, oh, to Belfast this week, isn't it? It is, yeah. So if it goes past your house, see if you can spot the guest celeb, sort of, and write into us at the usual address. Um, you know what time it is, don't you? No, what time? Watch your time. Uh -oh. <laughs> ah, it's time for... It's torture! Yes. Now, this wonderful machine is called the Egg. I love it. And it, only one of these four will survive to the end. Now, behind each victim is a large hand, which pushes them step by step closer to the edge. When they go over the edge, they land in the pit, which today is filled with rain. What, 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 what? You keep going on about this pit. We don't actually believe there's anything in it, do we? No! Get in, Fifi! Yeah! <laughs> yes, like I said, it's filled with a very large, Child-eating crocodile! <laughs> Shut up, you lot! It's my game! Now, the rules are the same as before. So, the aim of the game is to... Survive! Right, let's get on with the first question. What do you call a young swan? Uh, uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows? It's a signet. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Right, an upstairs question. How many eyes does a cyclops have? Ah, blue. That's blue. Go on, answer that one. What? Eight. Eight? A cyclops has eight eyes. It only has one. Take a step forward, Stevie <laughs> baby. Right. Which is the largest planet in our solar system? Ah, oh, that's green. Go on, answer that. Jupiter. It's Jupiter. It's correct. That means blue, grey and red. Get pushed down. Step forward towards the edge. Go on, Fifi, Fifi, swimming around. She's waiting for Dindy. Yeah. Right, let's have an upstairs question. What do you call the type of pen made from a feather? Ah. Oh, that's green. Answer that one upstairs. Don't know. Get that out. It's a quill. Shakespeare used one of them. Right, that means green. Go for it, boys. Hello, welcome to the edge. Right, what does je ne sais quoi? No, je ne sais pas mean in English. That's green again. Go on. I don't know. Do you know it or don't you know it? Oh no, it is. I don't know. You are correct. That means red, blue, and grey get put forward. One. Somebody's going in. And that's their question. What type of food is grown in a paddy field? It's rice. Rice. Right. Is that their question? In the nursery rhyme, who was christened on Tuesday? <laughs> I, I can't blame you if you don't get that one. <laughs> Even I wouldn't. It's Solomon Grundy, born on Monday. Nice one. Right, here's an upstairs question. What language did the ancient Romans speak? Oh, my God. Here they are from South and they can't answer nothing. Latin. Right, here's another question. What do you have to break to make an omelette? Ah! Yes, that's red. Uh, answer that one downstairs. Egg. Uh, it's an egg. Anyway, you are correct. That means green, blue. Yes, blue! <laughs> tacking, green, tacking. Right, here's an upstairs question again. Whose dog is called Snoopy? Ah! Green. Who's that? It's green. Answer that one. You don't know. Charlie Browns. Take a step forward, green. Right, that's the question. What is a rhinoceros's horn made out of? Ah! Green. Oh, green. Ivory. Ah, oh, what? Ivory. Now it's hair. Bye bye. Ah! Dizzy, dizzy. Oh, we've got two left. It's the big one. Upstairs question. What would you be playing to win the ashes? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Go on, you know, cricket. Right, another question. What leaf do you do uh, you do you fin in the Canadian flag? What users used in the Canadian flag? What leaf? What leaf? The Canadian flag? It's what? It's a maple leaf. In Britain, what makes a billion? Come on, what's a billion? A million, million. Oh, this is getting awkward. Where does it does it rain in the equator? Ah, yes, go on, get it right. Yeah, no. 
No, it was yes! You take a step forward. One more. What? With what colour is jealousy associated? Ah! Red. Yeah, hey, I did help a bit. Bye bye, hey, great! Ooh. We've got the winner. That's Jeff and Colin. Join me over here. Oh. Uh, come on. We're going to have a quick head to head here. Oh, Kevin, what are you doing to roll this skate? You never got me over. Did a bit of a Peter Simon then. Right. Stick this on, Colin. Right. Out, mate. Come on, come on in. Come on, in. Put those on your head. Well done, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. I'm going to ask you some questions about Colin. If you get the right, you will win to make the prizes, right? If your friend had to amuse wait, himself wait. or herself for an afternoon in the park, what would they choose? Skateboard, a bicycle, or a pair of roller skates? Yeah. You're in a bicycle. Take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. Take it off. Bicycle, right. What would you like to amuse yourself in the park? Skateboard, bicycle, or a pair of roller skates? Basketball. Basketball? No, it's not basketball, bicycles. Bicycle. Bicycle, you mean? Yeah. He means bicycle. They win the prizes. Well done! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice torture. See you in the final. Yeah. Did you bring the prize? We'll get some prize in a minute. Yeah. Now is the time that we've all been waiting for. Don't move me. It's time for a It's drama! <laughs> Anyway. My brother's seen it. He'll give you the what's it. We've already got the what's it. You look all right to me. Mm. All right, what's it worth? <gasps> cheesy. Delightfully cheesy. Just melt in the mouth. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 O
What's it to me? Watch out for the free Batman gear offer on special packs. There's a dinosaur, and he's eating a titchy breakfasticus. Yuck! Look, Dunk. That'll never fill up a brontosaurus. Brontosaurus? Nobody heard us. Run! <laughs> That's why they became extinct. They didn't get a proper breakfast. The wheat of eggs. If you know what's good for you. Okay. The puppies treat you as the mother. They trust you with their well-being. Pedigree chum puppy food and small bite mixer it leaves nothing to chance. It has the correct balance of good quality protein, vitamins, minerals, everything a puppy needs for a good, healthy start in life. They love it. For nourishment you can see in a dog, from a puppy through to fully grown, Pedigree Chum. Top breeders recommend it. Wanted for rustling hamburgers. He was roped into it. Dentists warn that plaque is a major dental problem. Plaque builds up on your teeth every day. And no matter how hard you brush, you don't get enough off. Especially in hard to reach places. Rinse with plaques before brushing and you'll shift more plaque than brushing alone. Plaques shifts more plaque than brushing alone. One out of two, out of three. Now, Deep Heat 4 is here. 32 of the hottest club hits. Deep Heat 4, the hottest album around. From Telstar. Welcome back, and welcome back, Andrea. Mm. Tell all. <laughs> well, I don't want to say too much because it'll spoil the film, but I will say I had a fantastic time. Costa Rica is a very beautiful place and the people are so friendly. Oh, yeah. Are you sitting comfortably? Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, it all started with a very long flight. In fact, it took us over 24 hours oh, to get there. Wow. It's a long time. I was very tired when I arrived in Costa Rica. I've finally arrived in Costa Rica in Central America. This is my hotel. It's taken 24 hours to get here. I'm absolutely shattered. I'm also quite excited because tomorrow I'm going to the rainforest. But right now, I'm going to bed. I'm not here in Central America all on my own. To make these films, we need other people. So, this is Tim. Tim's in charge of everything. This is Keith. He's our cameraman. And basically, it's us three who are going to be travelling all over the world making these films. However, we can't wander around these strange places willy-nilly without a guide. So, in Costa Rica, our guide is Claudio. This is Claudio. Bueno. And as soon as we've loaded up all the gear, we're taking the road out of San Jose, straight to the rainforest.
There are two things that make rainforests such extraordinary places. The first is where they are. They grow around the equator, which is very hot. In fact, here in Costa Rica, we're 10 degrees above the equator. The other thing that makes a rainforest a rainforest is rain. In England, we get about 60 centimetres of rain a year. Here in Costa Rica, they can expect anything up to six metres of rain. So lots of sun and lots of rain make these very special places indeed. Not only are these forests beautiful places, but they're also very useful. They help keep the atmosphere healthy and the world's climate constant. They provide us with wood and all kinds of food such as coffee, rice, wheat, pineapples and oranges originally come from the rainforest. In fact, these are such wonderful places that there are hundreds of different species of plants, insects, birds and animals living here. In fact, in Costa Rica alone, there are 849 different kinds of birds. There are things living in this forest that have not even been discovered. Having seen how beautiful the forest was from the outside, I couldn't wait to get in amongst the trees. So after picking up our guide, Oscar, I took my first steps into the rainforest. This one's called Barilo Carrillo and is home to jaguars, ocelots, tapirs, and all kinds of birds, snakes, and insects. Oscar took us into virgin forest, and as we made our way through the trees that have been there for thousands of years, I felt completely safe and at peace. When I mentioned this to Oscar, he replied, well, this forest does not just belong to Costa Rica, it also belongs to you. It belongs to everyone. Oscar has a great love of the forest and enjoyed showing me all kinds of fascinating insects and plants, including this one, which Indians use to cure headaches. In fact, many cures and medicines have come from this magical and powerful place. Who knows the cure for AIDS or cancer might well have been under my nose. Unfortunately, as you probably know, places like this are being destroyed every day. This whole area was once covered in tropical forest, but now you can see patches of bare soil. In Costa Rica, the forest has been mostly cleared to graze cattle for beef that is then exported to other countries. So, does it matter if the trees are cut down? Well, yes it does, because the forest works in a very clever way. Think of it like a sponge. When it rains heavily, the forest soaks up the extra rain. And then when it's hot, it releases a steady supply of water, keeping it green all the year round. A vast and beautiful evergreen forest. When the trees are cut down, the roots can no longer hold the vegetation and soil together. But when it rains, the soil is washed away, which in turn silts up the rivers and causes flooding. People cut down the forest because they need to make a living like anyone else. Wouldn't it be nice if the forest could be left alone to grow, but still provide work for local people and valuable resources for the world? Well, it's starting to happen in Costa Rica. In 1979, they set up a national park service, and now huge areas of land are protected. We've all heard of deforestation. Well, the Costa Ricans are doing something called reforestation. I went along to a place called Poriscal, an area that has lost most of its rainforest, but which is now being replanted. Hola. Hola. Roberta Hodges, who works for the National Direction of Forestry, showed me what they were doing. And here you can see that they are no longer cutting down the trees, but replacing them. In fact, you need special permission to cut down a tree in this area. They are replanting all over Costa Rica, both for short term, for fuel and building, and for long term. So in many years to come, this area may again be covered in tropical forests.
This is why it's called the rainforest. One minute, Roberto and I are having a nice cozy chat. The next, the clouds came rolling over the hills. You could see them coming towards you. And then this, it all happened within about 30 seconds. And it's fantastic. Costa Rica is not only preserving its tropical forest, it is also setting an example to the rest of the world by replanting it. When I arrived here, I thought I had a definite interview with the president, Don Oscar Arias. However, he was too busy to talk to me, but I was determined to talk to him, so I chased him across the country and finally caught up with him and his wife at an official function where I asked him about his reforestation program. Well, we're already proud of what we've done concerning uh, uh, our reforestation program and the conservation of our natural resources. In Costa Rica we are very proud to be such a small nation and yet have 4% of the world biological diversity. Uh, this is why we are struggling so hard to preserve our tropical rainforests as we know that the survival of all those species of plants and animals eventually depends also on our own survival. This is a cause that has no frontiers. It affects what happens in Costa Rica or what happens in England, affects us mutually. So we hope that we can cooperate uh, now and in the future to protect the rainforests. Well, we support you. Costa Rica is a very beautiful country and we wish you all the best with your work. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Oh, thank and happy birthday, President, for yesterday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Oh, that was wonderful. Fabulous. Does that make you feel more hopeful about the rainforest now? Well, yes, it does, because we hear so much about the destruction of the forest that it's nice to know that a little country like Costa Rica do mm. something positive. But that doesn't mean everything's okay, because places like Brazil mm -hmm. are still burning down their forests. Mm. In fact, if you'd like to know more about rainforests, you know, where they are, why they're important, what you can do to help. I'm going to put together a fact sheet that tell you all this stuff. And if you'd like a copy, the address is Rainforest, Motormouth, PO Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14 5LL. Now, actually, I've just got one more question. Yes. You went with all these lotions and creams and things. <laughs> oh, Did yeah. you meet any mosquitoes? I didn't get bitten once, but what was funny is our cameraman got... Uh, the insects loved him. They were biting him <laughs> all the time. So he had to borrow my lotions. I'm not surprised. They want to bite you. <laughs> hey, you didn't get bitten, eh? We'll try these very oh, nice no, mosquitoes. No, no, no. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 you can't Ooh. do that. What are they? Neil, do you Parents. want one? <laughs> It's a little joke, I think. Yes! Welcome back to the final of... Yes! Yes! Now these eight victims have battled their way through to the final and they're waiting to do battle to the death! Yes! Right, right, just a re, yeah. Now, this machine makes Ratchet's mouth water because it's the Duncan Munch machine. And only one of these four has woken up. Only one of these four will survive to the end. Now, above each victim is a large tank filled with Ratchet's favourite relish. And above that are two weights. And if you lose both weights, you'll be covered in dunk and fed to Ratchet. Now, the rules are very simple. I'll ask questions, you know the answer buzz. If you are right, your partner can take anybody's weight and place it on yours. If you are wrong, your partner must throw a whale rate. The aim of the game is to survive! Right, let's get on with the questions for the final. Are you ready? Yes. Do penguins have feathers? Ah! Oh, that's red. No. No, it's yes. What a shame. Take, uh, take away, throw it away. All right. <laughs> yeah. Who was Christopher Robin's <laughs> best friend? Oh, that's green. That's Kirsty. Poor Kirsty. We need a food. You are correct. So you could take anybody's way. Yes, we lost red. Stay away. Don't give up. Get out of the way. Right, 
What passenger airliner travels faster than sound? Ah! Oh, that's green. That's blue. Sorry, go on, love. Speed. What? Speed. What? Speed. No, it's Concord. It's Concord. Take uh, a wait away. Throw away, wait. Go on, blue. Throw away, wait. Cool, wait, up. Terry, wait, up. Right. What colour band had a hit with the race? Oh, oh, they're shouting it out. I bet you get that one, Kirsty. Yeah. You are correct. It was shouted out. Very nice. Right, take some of with names in blue. Go on, Ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> Bye -bye, Kirsty. Grab up, Ratchet. Take her away. Right. Are you ready? What was William Tell's favourite weapon? Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. Don't know, don't know. It's a crossbow. Is, uh, I'm going to throw a word to the audience, I think, because we've got a lot of weights here. Is any part of Iceland in the Arctic Circle? No, no, yes. yes. What was it? No, and a yes. It's a, well, I'll, I'll accept a yes. I'll accept a yes because I'm really nasty. Take a way to weigh each of you. <laughs> All right, are you ready? You better get this one right. How many days are there in August? You better make it get on this one. Come on, come on, come on. Nah, you don't know. It's 31. Too late. Somebody shout it out. How do you go up a hill by in a canal? On a canal. How do you go up a hill on a canal? Right. Well, that's great. You better get this one. By locks. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not going to say that again. By locks. All oh, right. My mistake. Terribly sorry. Yeah. Take it away. I thought that was a bit close. <laughs> um, now, yeah, we'll have this like the audience again after that, because I feel a bit of a sweat coming on. How many pins... Oh, I asked that one before. I've asked that one before. On what ship did the famous mutiny take place? Mountain. Yes, you are correct! Both of you, throw away, away. Right, what do you call an elephant's nose? Ah! Oh, that's cursing. You could win this one. Tusk. A tusk! A tusk! No, no, it's not. It's a trunk, but it's too late. Take the weight away. We're going to get guns. Bye-bye, Kirsty. What a shame. Dutch is getting ready. Get the gun. <laughs> Ratchet, take it away. We've got a winner. That is Colin and Jeff. Come and join me out the front here. Give it a round of applause. Come and join me. Let's, let's bring on the prizes, shall we? Come here. Where's Jeff? Well done, right, Colin. Well done, Jeff. Well done. We've got your razor here with a lovely pair of prizes. These fantastic roller skates. Bags like Matt, you too. You wouldn't mind a pair of these yourself, eh? Well, we'll see what we could do for you. Thanks a lot. Join us again next week for another game of. It's Well done, Colin and Jeff, but they must be mad. What do they want to win for? That means they've got to come back for more torture? Ooh, crazy people. Now it's time for David Taylor's second report on threatened species. And the problem is, for all of them, time is running out. Rachel, this is where they come? Yes, this is where they come every night. Every night? Yes. Any particular time? Um, about 9.30. And how do you see them? Um, through the kitchen window. Um, what do they do? They just eat food and then they just go. And where um, do they go? Um, they go to the pond for a drink. Over or, there? Yeah, yeah, or they go down here, um, just into their home. How many homes have they got over um, there? Quite a few. And you say they come from several houses away? That's right, yes. So this is probably a sort of holiday home complex for them. Yes. And the main residence is over there, quite a way. Mm. Hmm. So you've got an awful lot of these active mm. little moles underground. Do you like moles? Yes, I do. But we're not interested in those today. Show me some more evidence. Right. This well, is where they what is it exactly? This is where they come every night. It's their pathway. You're right. It is a pathway. You should be able to see the scratches, though. I can. Fantastic! So, they come out of your garden and come trotting down this lane. Yes. 
What happens then? Well, there should be another pop around here. Oh, there it is. This is where they come down to get their food, and then when they're finished, they go back up into the next door's garden. Well, we'd better go and see what's happening in there. This is a marvellous old orchard garden. And you've actually seen them in here? Yes, they just around, roam around the trees and mess about and play with each other. And feed here too? Yes, they feed on the apples, what have fallen on the floor. Yes, well, they do like apples at a certain time of the year. And look at these low branches, I reckon they could reach those if they're not on the ground. Yes. Oh, here it is. I think this is one of the main doors to their residence. Do you agree? I think you're right. Now look, if we go over there, sit by an apple tree and watch, we could see something interesting. Do you know, they're great ones for leaving scent marks. And I've actually seen them against a tree like this do a handstand, put their bottoms up in the air leave a scent mark from little glands in their bottom, just up there, to let other animals know that they've been around. <laughs> oh, by the way, would you like an apple? Might as well feed while we watch. <sighs> Do you see what I see? By the weeds? Yep. It's time. See? Isn't that fantastic? I reckon that those must be about six months of age. Mm. Now, I think you're absolutely correct. Where we were was one of the entrances into the set, the underground home of badgers. And you say that you often see badgers going from here to there, mm. and that there are other sets in this area. So I think what we're seeing is one group of badgers living with their main home here in this garden and using your home as a second sort of um, arrangement of sets. This is a very, very common thing that they have a system here, a system there. They may have three or four groups of sets. Fascinating. And you know, some people have actually put cameras down into the set of badgers to observe their social life because they're very, very social animals. Do you know how many badgers live together in a group? I bet it's been difficult for you, hasn't it, to mm. tell how many you're seeing? Yeah. About eight? Yeah, that's very common. Round about that. In actual fact, in Britain, about eight and a half badgers. Mm. I can't imagine what <laughs> half a badger looks like. Live together, you know, the average mm. set. So down in the set, a group will be living. There'll be adults, young mm. adults, and some babies. Now, of those three youngsters, sadly, on average, only one of them will reach the age of one year. 65% of all badger cubs die before they're a year old. And 30% of adult badgers are killed every year. Mm. Terrible. Mm. What do you think is the main cause of killing badgers? I think the roads and the cars. And You're absolutely the right. The motor car. The motor car. Oh, look at that. The motor car kills about 47 to 48,000 badgers yeah. every year. And on top of all that, yeah. there are the diggers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are the developers, land developers, yeah. who just go around digging up land, never thinking about the badgers. And then there are gamekeepers and farmers uh, who don't like badgers. They say that they attack lambs in upland yeah. areas. Not true. Although badgers sometimes scavenge, you know, they go yeah. eating dead carcasses of lambs that have died for other reasons. But the main food of the badger is worms. They love earthworms. That's what they're really after. And then, of course, there are those people who like go hunting foxes. And the fox hunters, particularly in winter, actually block up the sets of badgers. And sometimes they can't get out and they suffocate and die of starvation underground. And worst of all, are those evil, barbaric people who like to dig badgers out mm for sport. What do you think of that? Terrible. I mean, they, badgers don't sort of hurt human beings, so Absolutely. why should we hurt them? Absolutely. But can you imagine digging up a badger and then having what's called sport of okay. it, by setting dogs against it and uh, yeah. watching a Terrible. fight?
although badgers are not endangered in Great Britain, they are threatened mm. by things like that, that I've just mentioned. And luckily now, we have got laws. You're not allowed to kill or injure or take a badger without a very special license, and it's difficult to get, thank goodness. Enough. Look at those things. Lovely. Looking at those, and you do this, what, well, nearly every night. Every night. What do you think is the best reason for making sure that we've always got badgers around? Well, they're just lovely creatures. They're peaceful. They don't hurt anybody, you know. Part of your family? Part of our family, yes. We're going to have the third film in David Taylor's reports in two weeks' time. Yeah. yeah. That's all we got for today. Um, oh, I'd like to thank our audience today who are from... <laughs> yeah, sorry about the torches. Next week they're going to be from <laughs> Belfast. If you spot the motormouth coach razzing up and down the motorway, and you can identify the guest celeb, sort, sort of. of, sitting in the back of the coach, write letters now to the usual address, and there will be some prize bags up for grabs. Yeah, now that's just about it for this week, but next week... Sunita's joining us, she'll be performing and we'll be chatting to her. And uh, Jason Donovan and I next week, it's our last report from Japan, find out what happened when we went round Tokyo as tourists. Yeah. We're also going to be showing basketball with a difference and we're going to have Vicky Morgan in the studio and she's a 13 year old who just won a magazine for Best New Singer. Yeah, Young Cartoonist of the Year will be here. We'll also have the second of Andrea's Costa Rican reports. Where are you off to next? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Australia. Wow. <laughs> 36 hours it takes to get there. Does it? Yeah. Are you going to sleep on the flight? Uh, I think I'll have to. Say hi to Kylie for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've well, got Erasure, haven't we? We have. That's yeah. just about it for this week's show. Erasure are going to put it to a final stop. Yeah, I think so. We'll have time. our studio audience yeah. up dancing. Come on. See you later. See you next week. Yeah. Bye. 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 We'll be together again. I've been waiting for a long time. We're gonna be, we're gonna be together again. I'll be connected to the right line. We'll be together. Nobody ain't never gonna disconnect us. Forever separate us. I'll say to us, you got to lose. Forever, 